Howdy folks and welcome back to the Adams Eats Kitchen. How are we doing? Hope you had a good weekend and you escaped most of the snow. Uh, if you're here in the UK you'll know what it's been like the past week. It's been pretty bad to say the least. I mean you know you look at places like Canada they must be laughing at us because they deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis but we're not used to this kind of weather hence why everything comes to a standstill and we end up sitting at home eating soup and feeling sorry for ourselves. But that's the way it is for us, we just have to get on with it. I mean, it seems to be subsiding somewhat, the snow started to melt, it's getting a little bit warmer. I mean, it's still bitterly cold, which is the perfect reason to make my beef stew. Now this recipe is actually a request from a viewer, her name's Aisha, um, she asked me to do this a few weeks ago. I haven't got round to it because, well, the gas problems have been poorly, so this one's for you. Now, I'm not just going to do a recipe, I'm also going to show you some techniques and give you some advice, which should hopefully show you how to turn an ordinary stew into a better one. So let's crack on with it then. If you look down below the description, you can get a list of what you need, and also if you press that pause button now, you can get a list of them there as well. And the first thing we need to do is go and prep the beef. Right, so let's talk about the beef then. Now I'm using brisket, you could use chuck, you could use shin, you know, it doesn't really matter. Now personally, what I think makes a really good stew is big chunks of meat. Now don't go out and buy those packets of silly little cubes that you get from the supermarkets. They tend to be too lean, they dry out, and there's no flavor in them whatsoever. So by having a whole cut of beef, you can make nice big chunks. And also because of this cut, it's got lots of fat in there, it's gonna keep it moist, and it's gonna add lots of flavor as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just remove the string from the beef. Just using a knife, just move that plate out of the way. And basically all we're gonna do is to roll this out as it comes in a sheet like that. And all I'm gonna do is just trim it up a little bit, just take off some of these really thick bits of fat. Okay, so once you've trimmed off those bits of fat, all I'm gonna do now is just to cut it lengthways into strips, as it were. And then all I'm gonna do is just cut it into nice thick chunks. Okay, nice and big like that, okay? Not like those silly little cubes that you get in the supermarket, nice big meaty pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way through this, cut this beef up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Right, okay, so I've finished chopping up the beef. You can see, look, how nice and big those chunks are. That's what you want. And now what I'm gonna do is to season it with plenty of pepper. Be generous with it, because beef loves it. And also just a touch of salt. Give it a good old mix. Make sure that beef is coated and all that seasoning. And once you've done that, we now need to brown it off. Okay, so what I've done now is I've put some oil in the pan. We're gonna get this onto a nice high heat. The flipping thing will work. Tell you what, what is your problem? Me and you are gonna have a fall in it. Thanks. And also at this point you want to preheat your oven to gas mark 3. I'll put the conversions down below somewhere. And that'll just get the oven nice and hot ready for the stew to go in. Also just off camera I've got a nice big casserole dish with a lid. So we can transfer everything into it ready for the oven. So once your pan is nice and hot we need to get the beef in. You may have to do this in batches, it depends on how big your pan is. Now you don't want to overcrowd the pan because if you put too much beef in it's going to stew rather than brown. So I'm going to fry these off in batches uh, so the beef is nice and brown all over. And I can't stress the importance enough, right? You want a nice golden brown colour. Because if you don't do that, your stew is not going to be half as good. And this is what I'm talking about when I say you need to get that beef nice and brown, all right? It's called the Maillard reaction. You can see it's got those really nice golden caramelised bits on the surface. And that is going to be the foundation for your stew. So I'm going to leave this to one side whilst we get on and prep the veg. Right, okay, so I've got my veg here. I'm using carrot, onion, celery, uh, using some parsnips as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these carrots out of the bag. These are Chantenay carrots, they're nice and sweet. And literally all I'm going to do with these is just tip them out. And I'm just going to take off the ends because uh, I don't want that kind of muddy root part you know, in the finished stew. I might just rinse them under the tap just to get rid of any bits of soil or anything that's left on them. And once you've done that, you just need to transfer them into the same pan that you cooked the beef in. Next thing is the onions. And again, I'm just gonna take the ends off, cut it in half. About time I sharpen these knives again, I think. And then peel them, obviously. And once you've done that, all I'm gonna do is very simply chop them into smallest chunks. You don't need to be too fancy because they will kind of break down in the stew anyway. Okay, and then add that to the pan as well. Same with the celery, just top and tail it. And then just slice it down the middle 
and then again into small chunks. Okay, so then add that to the pan as well. And then I'm gonna take some parsnips. I'm probably gonna use four. And I will peel these, and then again, just top and tail them. Just get rid of the naff bits. And then just trim off the small end piece, and then turn it over and cut the bigger piece in half. This sort of ensures that they're roughly all the same sort of size. And I'm gonna add that straight to the beef, because I don't really need to do anything else with these. Now I've got four cloves of garlic here, and all I'm gonna do is just take the skin off. And then all you need to do is just to slice it nice and thinly. Again, don't worry too much because it will break down in the stew. Okay, and then just add that straight to the beef. Right, so I think that's all the prep done, so let's move on to the next step. Right, so here's my veg then. I'm just gonna add another touch of oil. If there's not enough in that pan. And I'm gonna turn the gas on to nice and low. Oh, wait this time. And what we're aiming to do here is just to very lightly caramelize the vegetables. You know, you don't want them golden brown, not like the beef, just a slight hint of color. And I'm also doing it in the same pan that I fried the beef in. So all those caramelized bits of beef that are stuck to the bottom of the pan is gonna add a really nice flavor. Because like I said at the beginning, this is also about technique and advice, not just a recipe. I mean, you could just throw the veg straight in the pan, bung it in the oven. Yeah, all right, okay, if you want to, but you're not gonna have a stew that's half as good. So I'm gonna keep this on a lowish heat for about five minutes, just to lightly caramelize that veg, and then we'll move on to the next step. Right, okay, so I've been cooking this veg out for about five minutes now on a fairly low heat. You can see that they've just taken on a little bit of color, and they've also helped lift off all those brown bits from the bottom of the pan. So now what we need to do is add some flour, just a couple of dessert spoons, and that'll act as a thickening agent for the stew. And just cook that flour out for about a minute just to take the rawness out of it, and then we'll add it to the stew. Right, okay, so our stew is almost ready for the oven. I'm just gonna add in some bay leaves. I've got four here, which I'm just gonna lightly squish just to release the oils. And I've also got some porter here, which is gonna add body, it's gonna add richness, and it's gonna also add some nice color to your stew as well. Now you want about, I'd say about 350 mil. Then we're gonna add some beef stock. So I've got about 500 mil there. You can always top it up with some more if you need to. And then just give that a good old stir. And what I've got here is some baking parchment. And I'm just gonna rip a sheet off that's a bit larger than my casserole dish. And I'm just gonna scrunch it up, fold it back out, and then just place that on the top. And just sort of tuck it in. Now in the world of chefing, they call this a cartouche. Now it's not just some fancy chefy gimmick, it does work. And what it does is it acts as a barrier, uh, so all that steam hits the top of that paper and goes back into the stew, rather than a hot lid, uh, so it keeps all the flavor in, keeps the moisture in, and you end up with a much better stew. So then I'm just gonna pop the lid onto that, and that's now ready for the oven. It's a million to one, million to one, it really couldn't be. Now that stew is gonna take around four hours to cook. I mean, the longer you leave it, the better it's gonna get. But around about the four hour mark, we should be golden. So what am I gonna do for the next four hours? Well, I'm gonna drink the rest of this. And I'm gonna go off and finish my Sunday chores. Right, so through the power of editing, it's been about four hours. I've had a good old snooze, so let's get it out of the oven and have a look. Right, so here it is then. Let's take the lid off and have a little peek. Remove that cartouche. And here it is, here's the stew. You can see how lovely and glossy and viscous everything is. That meat is gonna be really nice and tender. You know, if you just sort of press it, you can see it goes through easily with a spoon. And I'm just gonna taste the gravy for seasoning. That is packed full of flavor. You really get the sweetness of those parsnips. It does need a bit of pepper and just a tiny bit of salt. And I'm also gonna add a splash of Worcester sauce. That's just gonna help cut through some of the fat and just add a nice bit of astringency. So that's it, that's a finished beef stew. Let's give it a proper taste. Now I brought you in for a nice big close up here so you can see how tender this beef is. Look, I've got a spoon, not even using a knife. But look, if I just press in nice and gently, you can see how tender that meat is. And because of the size of the chunks, it's gonna be really nice and moist as well. So let's give it a taste. Get a bit of that carrot as well. Let's go in. That is so, so good. 
Now if I was to have this for dinner, you know, I'd serve this with some nice buttery mash, maybe some greens on the side. But it's really late at night, you know, it's like half ten at night, so I'm not going to have it now. I'll probably have some tomorrow. It's really rich, it's really tasty, it's good for you. That beef is really soft, it's tender, full of flavour. And one thing it doesn't need is any kind of tomato-based product. It doesn't need tomato puree, it doesn't need tin tomatoes, it's fine as it is. You know, I've seen recipes out there that call for a myriad of ingredients that you just don't need. Because really what it's about is using good beef, good stock and some good cooking techniques. Because if you get those things right, you're going to end up with a stew that tastes wizard. Well, there we have it guys, that's my easy to make beef stew. I'm going to have to be quick because the battery light's flashing on my camera, it's going to run out any second. Um, if you like what you see then please leave a like down below, comment, share across your social media platforms. And also if you'd like to show me some love then please subscribe. And as always if you stick around at the end there'll be some links to some other videos. And if you're not a subscriber there'll be a button for that as well. And I'll see your beautiful faces next time for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now. Leave it won't fade until you paint it black